Hi everyone, my name is Nathan Spitz, a biology student here at the University of Kentucky in Dr. Cooper's physiology lab. Um, this is a second model that we've created, a little more complex than the first one if you watched our Bernoulli's principle model. Uh, this one, we've got some of the same materials, our oil pump, pressure gauges, um, and our, our pipes that you can get from about Home Depot, Walmart, online. And then we've also added some gang valves from an aquarium uh, setup. And these allow four pipes for fluid to flow through. We've got two ends connecting. Um, you can turn these on and off to uh, simulate blood flowing to different areas of the body. This model that we have is our cardiovascular model. Um, the oil pump here is our heart. We've got an inner tube here to simulate our aorta and elastic stretch and recoil. Uh, this top one is the capillaries to our brain, and these bottom three are representative of the different organs, like your liver, kidney, and then like skeletal muscle. So what we're going to go over today is a couple, a little more in-depth stuff. We're going to start with the aorta, and we're going to talk a little bit about blood pressure and why the aorta is uh, more elastic than the other parts, the arteries and the veins. Um, the aorta takes the initial force from the pump of the heart and if the aorta wasn't able to expand and recoil then it would be a flat pipe and blood pressure would go from zero to spiking really high instead of how it is in our body where it maintains a more constant level. And the constant level is maintained because if you zoom in here we'll see with a big pump of the heart that aorta expands and then it retracts and keeps pushing the blood through at a more steady state. Um, so if it wasn't like that, you could tell how if, if there was some weak part here, you'd get a big pump and you might have a leaky aorta, an explosion, and it wouldn't be a closed system anymore and that would cause death pretty much unless it was treated very, very quickly. Um, so you can go over that with your students. Um, the next thing that we'll talk about is back to Bernoulli's principles with the resistance and flow. Um, right now we have a fairly low resistance because all of our um, all of our valves are open and when we look at the pressure gauges they're not spiking too much. We're getting to about maybe three or four psi. And once again, we're using that red food coloring to kind of simulate blood, uh, make your students happy. Um, we might have one that passes out, we don't know. So what we're going to do now is we're going to close off one of these organ systems. Say blood is, is getting a higher resistance to your liver or your kidney. We're going to close off the system and bypass bypass the liver. All right, I'm going to add, close this off so that we don't get backflow. All right, so what's going to happen is once this system is closed off, we're going to see an increase in pressure into the brain because we're going to have less fluid able to travel through here. All right, so let's check that out. Yeah, and you can see up here this fuel pressure gauge is getting closer to five now, while this one is staying down near three because we still have fluid flowing through. Um, so let's say, let's bring this to a more pathological state. If we increase adipose tissue and, you know, we have an unhealthy diet and we get a little bit more overweight, a little bit more overweight, the fat tissue actually has to be still perfused with blood. So those capillary systems increase in the adipose tissue. Um, the way that we're going to show that is we're actually going to cut down on the capillary system instead of adding more and more and more because that would get expensive and uh, tedious. So instead we are going to cut down on the system to show increased resistance because once you add more capillary beds it's going to cause more and more resistance flowing through the body. All right. So what's going to happen is once again we're going to cut off the backflow, 
and we're going to cut off these two systems to show an increase in resistance. And what we're going to see here is a much higher spike in the, the fuel pressure gauge going to the brain. So now we're getting to about 7, 8 psi. And, one, and what that indicates is hypertension. When you hear about hypertension, that's an increase in tension in the, in the veins. And once that starts going to the brain, you know, you say, oh, increased blood flow to the brain, that'd be good, right? It's actually not good. It causes, it can lead to brain aneurysms. I'm sure you've probably heard that term before. That's when something, blood vessels pop in your brain because there's too much resistance going through the, through the arteries. So we'll see that one more time. See that fuel pump is really getting up there. Now, if we close off these systems even more and say only allow the blood to flow through one of these gang valves, we're going to see a big spike in there and maybe we'll see one of these things explode. I don't know. We've got towels on hand. So now we're getting up to even 9, almost to 10 on the fuel pressure gauge. And I don't know if you can hear it through the, through the mic, but this stuff is really, really going now. All right? So what we like about this model and this system is that it's highly modifiable. If you want, you can take off the aorta and replace it with a more rigid tube to show that really high spike in blood pressure and what would happen if the aorta wasn't that elastic. Um, other things that you can do, you can add more organ systems if you want. You know, that's pretty much, this can be repeated as much as you want. Same with up here in the brain. Um, the other thing you can do is you can add or subtract fuel pressure gauges, put them over on the, ve on the venous side, try and put some in the capillary areas, um, and really you can play around with it and create whatever you want. That's what we got for you. Enjoy.